Welcome to the My Wool Mitten Podcast. My name is Carrie, and I'm coming to you from a small farm in the middle of the Mitten, Michigan's Lower Peninsula. I live here with a small flock of sheep. Sheep have been a part of my life for over 50 years now, and this flock, although it looks a lot different than it did a few years ago, it's still a very important part of this farm. I love them for all that they contribute, the wool, their personalities, and of course what they bring to the infrastructure of a small farm. So welcome. Um, we'll be talking just a little bit about some knitting and some spinning, um, a little bit about the world, and a little break that I'm going to be taking for about a month. And so I just wanted to catch you up with what was going on and what I've been doing and um, and then wish you well as we go into the month of March. So welcome. Everyone is welcome here, and uh, I hope that you'll enjoy this little update. And of course, as always, bring your cup of coffee. This is quite a funny looking angle, but I did want to show you that once I changed my, my um, spun yarn, like I mentioned in my last episode, I, I respun or not respun, but spun a different batch, and now my gauge is spot on, one for the other, on the socks. And I'm ready to start the heel on both of them. My my first spin, the three-ply, I had a 42-ounce skein, or 42 ounce, 42 yard skein and a 44-yard skein, and they took me to the to 40 rows from the toes, this was the 42 and the 44, which I am just ready to attach the second ball, which I have to wind into a ball. So just a quick update on those. Um, I was going to do the contrasting color heel, but two things. I'm ready to start the heel, and I'm too lazy to go ahead and spin the yarn for it. This is already all spun. And since this is a three-ply, then I'll be real... I'll be consistent going right on through. I'll probably do a contrasting uh, cuff. So that's the update on my second sock spin for the year of 2022. The light's changing, even though we've had some snow. It's just it's just a different light out there. Oh, I also wanted to mention that I just have an ounce and a half of this fiber left to spin up, and then that will be run one to cross off the list of stash fiber to spin. It's only taken me two years to uh, get going on this project, but that will be done. And there's, um, I, I think I have enough to finish my socks with what I have spun, so maybe I'll make a pair of fingerless mitts with this. We'll see. I just wanted to add this little bit in here. Um, I went ahead and cast on and worked this heel of the first sock, and guess what? Just like with my last sock, you'd think I would learn, I'm going to have to take it back and start the heel probably about four rows sooner than I did. Um, it, it would be okay, but it's a little bit sloppy, and you know I'm right at this point, so just as easy to just take it back probably to about row 35 and then rework the heel and the heel really looks nice too but that's what I got to do so just wanted to do that quick update oh and somehow I think I missed one of my pickups right here because it looks like there's a little gap so yeah so I'll be doing that so that's my update you'd think I'd learn it's getting to be that time of the year on the farm where the hay supply is dwindling and we start to count the bales and the number of days and when we might be out on full pasture again. The reason this, like you'd think, now Carrie, why don't you clean up that corner before you start on this corner? But it's two different cuttings of hay. That's first cutting from a field that's pretty rough and this is second cutting from a field that's pretty rich actually. And so um, I just was coming up from chores and was thinking about that. And also real quickly, this is all the straw that's left, too. And the reason that is stacked so wonky is because uh, it was baled a little wonky. And so the strings are really loose. It's uh, 
full of chaff more than lengths of straw, so the mice really want to get into it. And so I started to pull some bales down and they kind of exploded, burst out of their strings. And so that's why that looks a little funny. So that's not that much, but I don't use a lot either. And this year's straw was almost harder to get than hay. So I got what I could and we'll use what we can. And then of course I have the chaff that's on the floor that I'll sweep down to use for bedding after we clean out the barn. I don't know if I scroll up if you'll get an idea of how empty the mow is getting going up. That's the roof line where the wall meets the roof and then goes up. Years past we would have had hay stacked way high but we had it stacked just as high as this beam this year. So that's quite a lot of hay. This was an unexpected cast on or, or something I wasn't planning to cast on just now. I've had this pattern, the Skymning Shaw by Sophia Camelborn in my uh, library for quite a long time and uh, I always had intended to make it. I haven't made shaws for um, about two years now because I feel like I have probably all the shaws that I need. But then I decided, no, I did want a little bit of a lighter weight one. And then um, Marit, I hope I'm saying that right, of Countryside Knitting, who I follow, announced that she was going to have a knit along in English for any of Sophia's patterns, which I have several. Um, but and I and I considered socks because I've been spinning for socks. But then, as I was going through some of my baskets of yarn, I actually had intended to knit this with black as the um, raised stripe color, and then um, jewel tones and more natural tones as the contrasting colors. But I had this basket of fingering weight yarns, bits and pieces, m several of them from some of my favorite indie dyers, two of who are no longer dying anymore. And I thought, you know, and this is, the white is our farm yarn. And I thought this is a time of year when maybe something a little bit brighter and lighter would be fine to do. And so on a whim, that's what I did. I kind of messed up here at the top. I did the garter, garter tab properly, but I misunderstood when I was reading. Um, I, I And I wanted the white, the, the consistent color, to be in the garter row. And so I kind of switched it around and I didn't tear it back, I just went from there. So looks a little different up there at the front. So that's something that I'm doing and that's with Countryside Knitting, Countryside Knit, which is a podcast here on YouTube. And there's also a Ravelry group and it's going throughout the summer. So maybe I'll get this done and then also cast on the, the one that I intended to do with the black and the darker colors, we'll see. And so uh, that's just another kind of a side knitting project that I have along with the sweater for my daughter that I showed you guys last time. That one's ongoing. And I've been working on that. I've probably got another two inches on it, but um, really not anything different to show you, right? So <laughs> so that is my uh, Skymning Shaw, if I'm saying that properly, by Sophia Camelborn for the Countryside Knitting podcast knit along. Size 5 needles, various mini skeins and leftover pieces of fingering weight yarn, and um, I'm just doing either whatever I have in the little mini ball or mini skein of yarn, or else if I have more I'm doing a few rows and then I'll probably repeat them later on. And three of the indie dyers who feature quite prominently in this are Tiffany from the Woolen Homestead here in Michigan, who is no longer dying. Ellie from Curio Stitches in England, who is no longer dying. But then there are yarns from Bumblebee Acres Farms, my friends in Illinois who are still dying. And so uh, there will be at least three different shades of that in there. And then a few others that were from my swap from this past year from One Shoe Katie that I had leftovers of. And did I say size five needles? I think I did. And the white is Cordell and Alpaca. One of my favorite podcasts used to be 
and still would be, uh, except she did podcasting in English, Brit Arnold's World. And I understand why she did it. It was probably hard to do both a Norwegian podcast and an English. So I do still follow her, and um, especially on Instagram. But one of the things I slipped forward to was her project for Lent. And she had written a book about the colors of the rainbow and Lent. And I can't quite remember the name, but I'll try to put a link down below for her. And so last year I took some time for some knitting project during Lent and some reflection. And actually, um, when I had finished that and following along with her, I had some yarn left from a um, Advent calendar that a friend and I did. We didn't purchase any yarn, we just did a swap. And I didn't want fingering weight yarn, I wanted um, DK or worsted. And most of what she sent me was peace fleece, which I just love. And so I looked at the, I had quite a lot left over. I was also doing the knitting the books with Kate Hawthorne of Hawthorne Cottage Crafts. And there's a, a pattern in here called the Berlin blanket. And so that's what this is. And I have, I have shown it before, but I'm going to revive it for Lent this year. And I wanted to show you, these were the squares that I did last year. Um, going through the main colors of the rainbow, I had, there was two different reds. So there's the very, this is actually blowing out on the camera, the very bright red. And then this is like an over dyed gray. And then the gray that I'm bordering the squares with is my own natural colored Coradale. So I have red and orange, which goes nicely with my flannel shirt, yellow, And this is uh, actually a kind of a green, not a bright green, but I liked the way it went. And I didn't have quite enough of that, so I bordered it with a darker green, a blue, and a purple. And now I have some other shades in these colors, or I may just make them uh, in a rainbow fashion on the blanket and do other neutral colors around it. But I'm going to pick that back up for Lent this year. And so I just thought I'd show you that real quick. And I'm, I'm looking forward to picking that up and working on it again. And like I said, it is in this book, the pattern. Or you can buy it individually as well. So there's that. And, and with that, I, I was planning to sign off at the start of Lent and take a little break. I won't be doing the weekly updates for the socks spin along during Lent. and uh, But I may pop in now again on Instagram just to show you some progress but I really feel the need to step away for a little bit and focus on um, not burying my head in the sand but not being bombarded with so much stuff all at once and just keeping in touch with people that I know and trust for information coming out of Ukraine and in the world and so yeah um, so yeah I, I will be checking in occasionally but I'm not going to be doing um, a podcast or a vlog until after. I hope that by spending this time looking inward at myself, at my heart, and my motivations, that I'll be better able to look outward at the world and my place in it. I'm thankful for the president that my country has right now, President Biden and his wife. They are people of kindness and compassion and empathy. They're not perfect, but they're doing a difficult job and to do it with the respect that they have for all people is a very important thing. And I hope that you will support them in that. Take care of yourself, and thank you for watching.